Minister Vivian. Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the Prime Geek in Government, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong, we have made significant strides in our use of the latest digital technologies, first to generate new jobs, second to reskill our workers for these new jobs, third to restructure our economy in order to sharpen our competitiveness, fourth to improve the quality of life on a daily basis, and of course to enhance the integrated delivery of government services on a citizen-centric level. I want to thank Mr. Cedric Fu, Ms. Tinpei Ling, Mr. Daryl David, Mr. Teo Sir Luck, who have quite rightly emphasized that what matters is not technology for its own sake, but people, what we do with the technology and how it benefits us in our daily <coughs> lives. With your permission, Mr. Speaker, may I display an infographic to show our Smart Nation projects and their milestones, and Still. also request that the clerk distributes the printout. Thank you. So let me start by focusing. No, that's why I'm distributing the printout <laughs> for the sake of our eyes. First, we have focused on increasing convenience in our daily lives. The My Info project allows you to open a bank account or apply for credit cards online and get approval almost instantly through carefully secured shared data. SingPass Mobile is an app that allows citizens to log into government services using biometric authentication instead of passwords. I'm glad to report that 200,000 people have used the system since we launched it four months ago. PayNow has seen 2.3 million registrations. And in fact, a lesser known fact is that those of you who have linked your NRIC number to PayNow can receive your SG bonus, can receive your EduSafe awards, and even more pertinent politically, can even receive your CPF lump sum payments quickly, almost instantly, instead of waiting for checks to arrive in the mail. The Moments of Life app helps parents to manage their early years. So far, 2,000 births have been electronically registered through a single autofill form. I forgot to check whether Ms. Tin Paling used the app. Not yet. Well, next one. And this is part of our service delivery approach that Minister Chan Chun Singh uh, described just now. After my appeal and Josephine's appeal, you should have the next one. Together, we believe that these improvements will allow, you, will allow all of us to save time, reduce transaction costs, and increase efficiency. Second, Smart Nation has also tried to facilitate a safer living environment. We are trialing a new personal alert button for the elderly to call for help, especially after a fall when they may be immobilized. This was brought home to me even more starkly recently when Minister Kaur described when he had his fall and he fractured his arm, the intense agony that immobilized him. And as you would have seen in his Facebook post yesterday, this is not unique to him. Many elderly people have faced emergencies at home, alone, immobilized, and they need to call for help. So this is one example, trying to make a difference at a direct personal level. Another example, drowning detection systems have helped our lifeguards keep community swimming pools safer. The NEA has installed 50,000 smart gravity traps to help monitor and to help destroy breeding sites for dengue spreading Aedes mosquitoes. The My Responder app has helped to save the lives of at least 13 health heart attack victims so far. But more important than the apps and the technology is the fact that this is an example where technology has enabled us to express our mutual care for one another. Third, our initiatives have helped make it easier to do business. We're continuing to provide more choice and better interoperability in e-payments. 
Last year, the SNDGG, the MES and IMDA together launched the common SGQR standard. And NETS has rolled out 50,000 unified point of sale terminals across the country. These initiatives have helped merchants to offer greater convenience for consumers and reduce cash usage. Uh, you know, in Smart Nation, we must always be data driven, so I asked, and uh, I've been informed that e payment values have increased to more than three times that of ATM cash withdrawals. So we're moving in the right direction. NETS was also appointed to unify the e payments landscape at hawker centers and coffee shops, and this will allow the consolidation of different e payment methods and, more importantly, faster settlement for hawkers, so they receive their money the next day. More than 80,000 businesses have registered for Pay Now Corporate since its launch last August. Like individuals, businesses can now send and receive payments instantly. The Pay Now initiative has contributed to check usage falling to 20% of interbank transfer volumes. Again, making progress in the right direction. My Info Business allows up to 220,000 SMEs to open bank accounts and to apply for loans easily and quickly. IRAS has piloted direct submission of GST returns from businesses accounting software enabled by our national digital identity APIs and will look to extend this to all GST registered businesses. The network trade platform has reduced application time for trade permits. It used to take several days, now it takes one hour. This reduces the burden of administrative processes and enables our entrepreneurs to focus on growing their businesses instead of navigating red tape. Mr. Teo Selak and Mr. Vikram Naya asked about our upcoming initiatives. We will continue to make our digital services more accessible, more integrated. We will enhance the SingPass mobile so that it can be used for secure logins to selected private sector applications as well. Security will, of course, remain our central preoccupation. And Mr. Jan Minister Janil will address uh, Sylvia Lim's questions on security because without security at the core of our smart nation, many of these initiatives will be at risk. We will expand the slew of services under the moments of life to help citizens deal with all the significant turning points in our life, birth, school, marriage, even including end of life matters. And we will empower seniors to lead more active lives and MOH will share more of this in their session. We will continue to enhance convenience in daily life. Parking.sg is already used by over 60% of car owners and we want to make it even easier not just to pay for parking but to find that parking lot and this year GovTech, URA and the MSO will be trialing the installation of smart sensors so that we can provide real-time availability of curbside parking lots to people who are looking for a lot. HDB is looking to create smarter towns so that we can optimize land infrastructure and utilities and allow people to engage and form communities using these digital tools. This will make our heartlands more livable, more efficient, more sustainable and safe. Businesses can look forward to more digital tools to increase connectivity both within Singapore and beyond our borders. IMDA's new national e-invoicing standard will speed up corporate invoicing and payments. And those of you in business will know the velocity of cash flow is cr crucial in business. We are streamlining government transactions. The Minister for Finance mentioned a pilot portal to help up to 18,000 food service companies cut red tape in their license application. Anyone who's tried to open a restaurant would have known it takes many applications. We have tried to streamline all this. In the process, remove duplicate applications, reduce red tape, and to give approvals faster. And we hope to expand this effort to other industries in future. Our goal is to integrate all these services to help firms unlock new ways 
of connecting with consumers and other businesses and transacting with government. The SNDGG is not doing this on our own. We are not a ministry, but we view ourselves as a shared platform for the whole of government. The digital government blueprint calls for government to be digital to the core by 2023. And many agencies have therefore implemented and are, or are in the process of implementing new digital initiatives in order for us to achieve this. Let me give you another example. The MOH launched Healthy365, which has kept 1.7 million users active over the past four years. And many people have told me that they enjoy the National Steps Challenge. And I'm especially intrigued to see so many non-techie people wearing activity trackers. And it's not just because the HPB is giving it away free, but that combination of community and activity, and of course the usual Singapore uh, pursuit of health points and discounts helps. But the point is, we have used technology to make a difference and to improve health on a daily basis. MCCY recently launched a central volunteer management system to deepen volunteer engagement and recruitment. Six public agencies now use volunteer.sg to manage over 20,000 active volunteers, and MCCY will share more during their session. I've described a whole slew of existing and upcoming benefits to citizens from the Smart Nation. But I also agree with Ms. Tan, with Ms. Tin Paling that we must continue our citizen-centric focus and delivering services in an integrated way. Now, in the coming years, with the data generated from our expanding digital infrastructure, we can expect the services become more personalized, more tailor-made to the individual needs of citizens, and to be more responsive. When people shop online, when people engage online, especially with private sector, expectations are raised and they expect government to also to be able to respond in such a personalized, responsive manner. One way which we're going to do this is also to make better use of artificial intelligence, which we believe will greatly improve our lives and our economy. Let me spend some time then to share with you what we're doing in this AI space. AI, artificial intelligence, and in particular, deep machine learning, has revolutionized the scene in recent years. And AI has already begun to make an impact in our daily lives. You just stop to think about it. The voice assistants in your handphone the language translations, the GPS optimization, the credit card fraud alerts. All these have benefited from advances in AI just within the last two years. I've mentioned just now government has also been using AI for drowning detection in our swimming pools. We've also used it for skills future fraud detection and for local speech recognition. In fact, AI speech recognition is being used to augment the transcription of COS speeches this year. So it should make it more accurate. And even if you point out mistakes, you will help us improve the system. Mr. Cedric Fu asks how Smart Nation will keep us relevant. AI, data analytics, robotics, and automation are crucial ingredients for us to restructure our economy. We need to achieve a quantum leap in productivity by creating new engines of growth. And the government needs to upgrade our technology stack so that we can be more responsive to citizens' needs and to the demands of an increasingly competitive marketplace. We believe that Singapore has a good foundation for AI through a multi-agency effort led by SNDGG, MCI, and all our economic agencies. The National Research Foundation has set up AI Singapore to bring all relevant research institutions and AI startups together. GovTech will set up a center of excellence in data science and AI to help other agencies deploy these AI solutions and technologies. And finally, MCI is developing guidelines to encourage responsible and safe use of AI 
such as the Model AI Governance Framework, which Minister Iswaran announced recently. We need to double down on these efforts. This year, an interagency task force will study how Singapore will develop AI as a strategic capability and become a trusted global hub for test bidding, for deploying and scaling up AI solutions, especially in the context of a highly urbanized city like ours. For citizens, this means new and better services, whether from the government or private sector. And the possibilities are promising. McKinsey has identified 160 use cases where AI can be used for social good. For example, AI can recommend content to students based on past successes and engagement with the material and detect student distress early. Basically what it means is, you know, we talk about streams and subject banding, all that's still relevant. But to really to be able to customize that educational journey for that individual sometimes maybe even to gamify it, will provide a more helpful educational experience for our students. We also foresee um, AI optimizing urban scenarios, for instance, optimizing our traffic light networks, and to predictively maintain public infrastructure. In other words, make sure things don't break down, or to identify potential problems before they have led to a breakdown. We foresee AI applications in finance, in logistics, and cybersecurity. And in fact, there are already many local companies in these and other domains. So we hope, this is to answer Mr. Teo Sola, we hope to co-create with these companies the development of these new AI solutions. To scale up AI development, we are looking to democratize access to data and AI tools so that everyone can learn and experiment with AI solutions. We want to support the SMEs to adopt artificial intelligence and to work with government on relevant use cases. So we will expand the government and private sector collaboration. One example is AI Singapore's 100 experiments program for companies to solve their own real-world business problems together with AI experts. And this program will also bring AI apprentices to co-train with industry. So in other words, we are linking businesses, domain experts, and people who want to learn and enter this industry. Lastly, we will build up local know-how in artificial intelligence, and we will equip everyone to benefit from AI capabilities. This means teaching computational thinking and data literacy in schools and training adults in data science and artificial intelligence skills. Now, before that sounds too scary, I want to say that we do not expect everyone to become an AI expert. But think of artificial intelligence in the future the same way which you think of word processing today. It is a general purpose technology and we want our workforce to be able to use AI tools to participate meaningfully in a future AI driven economy to secure good jobs, improve productivity and raise wages. So let me conclude by restating the obvious. Smart Nation is ultimately about improving lives and livelihoods. We've done reasonably well so far. Singapore won the City Award at the 2018 World Smart Cities Award in Barcelona, which testifies to the concrete benefits that Smart Nation brings to Singapore and the recognition which we have from the rest of the world. Still, we cannot be complacent because the pace of technological change is so unrelentingly quick and government will continue to support our local firms in this mercurial environment through initiatives such as the Scale-Up SG, the Enterprise Financing Scheme, and the SMEs Go Digital, which you heard about from Minister Heng in the budget speech. And I share Ms. Rahayu's concerns on digital readiness and inclusion, and SMS Janil will elaborate on the inclusion the special inclusion initiatives that we will embark on to make sure that no citizen is left behind. But all these 
challenges and all these disruptions also bring many opportunities for Singapore, especially a city-state, hard-working, disciplined, highly educated people. We have disproportionate opportunities in such a world. We call on citizens and businesses to journey with us, to fully exploit our comparative advantage, take advantage of the resources and the infrastructure that we have put in place and to co-create solutions for the future. If we do this, Mr. Chairman, we can all reap the benefits of Smart Nation for years and decades to come.